Florida saltwater fishing. I'm Heath, and it's time to get into the fight. All right, folks, in this tips and tricks episode, we're gonna go over the easiest way to catch one of the most abundant and prolific bait fish found on the southeast coast of Florida. That's right, we're going over the easiest way to catch the false albacore. Before we get into this though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. Alright folks, so like I said, we're going over the easiest way to catch false albacore. In this episode, we're going to cover the how, the when, and the where. We're going to simplify the process so that you can get into the bite and catch this ultra fun fish. First, I got to say, false albacore is the most abundantly found fish in the Atlantic Ocean from the tuna family. Hands down, without a doubt, the easiest way to catch false albacore is by trolling. Now granted, there are other methods. They are voracious eaters. You can catch them jigging, both high-speed jigging and slow pitch jigging. Very effective ways. You can also catch them by drift fishing, whether it's live baits or dead, frozen, or fresh baits. You fish off the southeast coast of Florida, you are bound to catch false albacore, whether you like it or not. So, that being said, I want to go back to trolling. Trolling is the easiest way to catch them and find them. Now, when it comes to trolling, there's a couple of different ways you can go about doing it. You can catch them planer trolling. You can catch them topwater trolling. You can also catch them high-speed trolling. One of my favorite ways to do it is getting that high-speed strike on false albacore. So, when we're trolling for them, we're going to use baits like trolling squids, little four-inch trolling squids dolphin colored pinks and yellows and whites. They'll also hit trolling skirts. They will most definitely also hit chugger squids or Clark spoons. These are all up top water baits. They will most definitely also hit spoons, drum spoons. And of course, if you're planter trolling, they will hit strip bait lures. They'll eat them up all day long. They'll make a mess out of your kingfish trolling. Those baits are great for top water, for planer trolling, but I want to share with you the top two baits that I find to be the most effective for simplifying this process of catching a false albacore. The number one bait for doing it, I find, is the white bucktail jig. You're going to catch the most false albacore using the white bucktail jig, trolling it between four and six knots over the reef. And the next most effective bait, which you've heard me say before, the Billy Bait Mini Turbo Slammer. This one I like to take high speed trolling between 12 and 14 knots over the reef. And so in a nutshell, that's how you're gonna catch them. You're gonna go trolling for them. If you're doing standard top water trolling, you're gonna troll between four and eight knots, troll around the reef, and look for them, and wait for the bite. Once you find that depth that they're at, that is the depth that you'll tend to stay at because that's where the food that they're chasing is. Or if you're going high speed trolling, you're going to want to do between 12 and 14 knots. They will hit it. They swim up to 30 knots when they're chasing down prey. We're trolling for these fish, so we're not giving them the time to come up and examine our bait. We want them to act on the impulse to feed. Now, speaking of feeding, they're part of the tuna family, which means they have no swim bladder. So they're constantly swimming always swimming. They're always migrating in the standard migratory path around the Atlantic Ocean. They go up the east coast from Florida all the way up to Massachusetts, New England area. Then they curve out towards the Sargasso Sea and then they will come back down around towards the Caribbean and then back up and circle around. They're always migrating, always swimming. If they stop swimming, they sink and they drown. Having no swim bladder and always swimming means they are always expending energy, which means they always have to replenish that energy and eat. They eat a lot. So now that we've gone over the how, and you heard me mention the reef while we were talking about, we're gonna go over the where. So yes, the reef is where you're gonna wanna look for false albacore. False albacore don't head out into the stream very often. If you find them out there, it's a rare 
thing. If we're looking for them over the reef, you can find them anywhere in the range between like 30 feet and out to about 250 feet. They don't really go much deeper than that. Most general ranges where I have found false albacore the most are between 50 and 70 feet. And when they're migrating through, I also find them out around 200 to 220 feet. Up on steep ledges of the reef as the uh, third ledge of the reef is creeping up or I'll find them over the sharp ledges and structures over the shallow reef in that 50 to 70 zone. That's the reef for you. You're going to find them over the reef. They're reef dwelling animals. Now we're going to talk about when. Rule number one about when is don't fish for bonita at night. They rarely ever bite. You want to fish for them during the day and they will pretty much eat all day long. Now I'm gonna go over the specific time of year to find them. Off the southeast coast of Florida, if you're looking for them and you wanna stock up for bait for the rest of the year, you are going to want to go for them during the month of July. That is when they are the thickest. That's when the big fat females are coming through. You'll be able to stock up and fill your freezer with this great bait fish. You're gonna get baits like slabs, chunks, most definitely bonita strips for that planer troll. Now, they are around all year. They get smaller, they get bigger because they're always migrating, but the time of year where they're the thickest and pretty much unavoidable if you're trolling over the reef is July. Okay, so we've gone over the how, the where, and the when. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you out on the boat. We're gonna do a little bit of shallow reef trolling with the white bucktail jig. I'm gonna show you what it's like to find the shallow ledge in between 50 and 70 feet and troll over it and get into the hookup, get one on board. So we're up patrolling, like I said, with this pro trick, it's real quick. That's one of the great things about trolling with a white bucktail jig. You got it on a spinner, you pitch it out, you can get up and going within minutes. We've got our Penn Spin Fisher 5500 on a seven foot pen battalion rod. The class rating for this trolling setup is 12 to 20 pound class. So we're gonna head over, hit the reef's edge, that first reef in between, you know, 50 and 70 feet. We're gonna show you what these ledges look like. Troll around them. See if you can get into that fight. Have a little bit of fun. And again, we're fishing with light gear. Tail jig, half ounce. False albacore, some of the greatest biting fish in the world. All right, we're gonna let him go. 
All right, so that was some good old fashioned fishing fun. That is how you find where you're gonna target these species. You troll around for a little bit and you wait for the bite. Like I said, if you're trolling in July, you're gonna run into them. What I was fishing with is this. This is the exact rig I caught them on. Light spinning gear. This is a Penn Spin Fisher 5500. It is spooled with 12 pound monofilament. I have about a 10 foot liter of 20 pound test fluorocarbon. And then we have this, which is the magic little half ounce white bucktail jig from Spro. The rod that this is on is a seven foot pen battalion rod rated for the 12 to 20 pound class. A lot of flex in this rod. What we've got here is monofilament mainline, fluorocarbon leader, and a very pliable rod. What that does is that all provides a lot of shock absorbency for when you're trolling. As you troll and you get the hookup your monofilament's gonna stretch, your fluorocarbon's gonna stretch, your rod's gonna bend. All this does is this lets it stretch out and retract and set that hook so that when you get the fish up to the boat, chances are you don't lose them because the hook is set in deep. That is what monofilament and the shock absorbency factor of it is meant to do. Okay, so now that we've covered those grounds, what I wanna do is I wanna take you back out on the boat and I wanna get you into a little bit of high-speed trolling. Most definitely my favorite way of fishing for Bonita. I think it's more effective almost than regular topwater trolling. And if it isn't more effective, it is definitely a heck of a lot more fun. So here we go, back out on the boat, do some high speed trolling for the falsies. What we're gonna do here is something a little special, something that I like to call accelerated speed trolling over the deep edge of the reef. And what we're targeting is we are targeting Bonita. We're gonna throw in a uh, Billy Bait mini turbo slammer in the color pearl blue only one rod one reel one rod we're going to be trolling between 12 and 14 knots over the deep edge of the reef see if we can nab some bonita let's get this on we are approaching fall so the bonita are about ready to start disappearing i want to stock up as best i can and this is one of the best ways that i know to catch them is with accelerated speed trolling you know, it gets the adrenaline pumping. Always use that tether. some more good old fashioned fishing fun. And here we have the exact rig that you saw me fishing with right there. This is a Penn International 12H. This is a discontinued reel. It no longer exists. This is a classic. It's from the 80s. It's been reinvented a couple of times. If you are looking for something very similar to it, it is now called 12LT. It's spooled with 20 pound monofilament. And this was the lure we were using. It's the Billy Bait Mini Turbo Slammer, and it's on about eight to 10 feet of 40 pound monofilament leader. The rod that this is on is a seven foot star rod from the Handcrafted series. 
This rod is rated for the 15 to 30 pound class. And again, it's very pliable. And we're back to that theory of monofilament mainline, monofilament leader on this lure, and pliable rod. To put the brakes on that fish when he hits, let that shock absorbency set in, retract and set that hook so you can get him up to the boat. Especially when you are high speed trolling, you need a lot of shock absorbency, otherwise you're gonna yank the hook straight out of the fish's mouth. So the next step to this process is, I can't leave you hanging. I wanna take you and show you how to rig up the white bucktail jig for trolling. Hi, your spro jig onto your line. This is what you're gonna need. You're gonna need, obviously, you're gonna need your white bucktail jig. This one is half ounce. You're gonna need your six to seven feet of 20 pound fluorocarbon leader, a cutting tool, and you're gonna need your main line, which is attached to your reel. The first thing we're gonna do on our main line attached to our fishing reel is we're going to tie a loop called a spider hitch. I take about 12 to 16 inches and I form a loop. I'm gonna pinch my line and leave about three inches of tag over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I'm going to form a loop. I'm going to take the free end of the loop and I'm going to wrap it around my index finger and this initial loop three times. One, two, three. I'm going to take the free end of this loop here and I'm going to send it back into that loop that I just made and pinched together. Then I will grab that and I will slowly pull it out thus forming the knot called the spider hitch. Pull it slowly, pull on both ends, pull your main line against the loop, then you'll pull your tag end against the loop and there you have it that is a spider hitch loop we are going to clip off our tag the way you find the center of the loop is you will take the tag end of your fluorocarbon and you're going to put it through your loop and you are going to just pull on it so when you're pulling on it, this point right here is the center of your loop. What we're going to do is we are going to take about four to five inches of tag on your fluorocarbon leader. We're going to pinch right at the center of that loop. Now we're going to tie a no-name knot, which is essentially a reverse clinch knot. Pull seven twists against the main line. One, two, three, four, five, six and seven then we are going to send a tag back through this little loop that's been created right here on our hand where our fingers are pinching the center of the loop and then we are going to cinch down on it as if we were tying a clinch knot that is a no-name knot right there now you'll want to take your cutting tool and trim it off so we've got the spider hitch, which is a loop attached to the no-name knot. Now we're going to attach the lure, which is our half ounce white bucktail jig. We're going to attach that with a clinch knot. Now fluorocarbon can be abrasive, so I'm not going to do seven wraps. I'm only going to go with six on this. So one, two three, four, five, and six. And then we're going to send our tag end back through that little pinched loop. Grab your lure by the head and cinch down on it. So that was a basic setup and it's very quick, very easy. You can get out on the water. You can do that setup. Once you do it a couple times, it'll be second nature and you will be up and running in a few minutes. All right, so now that we've gone over how to rig up the bucktail jig, 
We can't leave you left out in the cold without showing you how to rig up for high speed trolling with the Billy Bait Mini Turbo Slammer. So we're gonna get into that rigging right now. To do this properly, you're gonna need to get set up with a few things. You're gonna need your lure, the Billy Bait Mini Turbo Slammer in the color pearl blue. Two 5 J hooks, size five, barrel swivel. We're also gonna need six to seven feet of 40 pound mono leader. And you're gonna need cutting tool. The first thing we're gonna do is we are going to make a double hook tandem setup with the two 5 J hooks. So to do this, at the back of your hook where the shank loops around and meets the shank again, you put your cutting tool in between it and you pinch down on it and it creates a space. With that space, you take your other hook, you insert it backwards and that's how you do it. Now, to close that space back up, what you do is you put it in the back side of your cutting tool and you pinch it back together. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to take one end of our leader. We'll feed it through the nose of the lure until it comes out the back. We are going to take this end, which will be the business end of the lure, and we're gonna attach our hooks with a basic clinch knot. Trim off your tag. The next thing we're gonna do is we are going to go to the other end of our leader and we're going to attach the barrel swivel with another basic clinch knot. Trim off the tag. And that's it. Your lure is done. You're ready to go. Okay, and so that was fairly straightforward and easy. We're rigging up a trolling lure on a leader with a swivel on the end, double hook tandem setup underneath the lure so that our trailer hook hangs out just beyond the end of the lure where fish are gonna strike to disable the prey. Again, that is one of my favorite ways to troll for a high speed troll. Okay, folks, so that is what I believe to be the easiest way to catch false albacore. We're gonna troll for them. We're gonna troll over the reef for them, preferably in the shallows of the reef, 50 to 70 feet. And we're gonna pick the easiest month of the year off the southeast coast of Florida, which is July. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. Hope you had fun, hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned about what I consider to be the easiest way to catch false albacore. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing going wherever the cool wind takes us.